All right. It says you're live. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about me, but it says <laughs> you are live. You are live. Yeah. As always, with our inundated equipment, we had just a little bit of technical difficulties. Well, Microsoft had a little bit of technical difficulties. It said it needed to update before we could proceed today. So we, we are live. We got one person online. I think that would be you. <laughs> you're, you're watching us over there. Amen. It's good to see you out there in Facebook land. Sister Jane. Jane is here. Yeah, it's good Walker to see you. Thomas. Sister. Bobby. Yeah, it, it's good to see everybody this, this evening. We are... Happy, happy, happy to be here. It's good to have you with me. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah. I'm good glad, to be alive. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you're feeling better, brother. Yeah. Yeah, it was all my fault. <laughs> I ate way too many carbs on the Valentine's dinner. Man, I, too many times me passing by you giving you something to drink, is that it? No, it was, <laughs> it was too much cake and too much spaghetti and, and a big old baked potato. And, and I know better than to... Put that many carbs into this body. Yeah, you partaked. <laughs> I, I partook. And yeah. I, I paid the price. Amen. The consequences Amen. were dire. <laughs> oh, brother, brother, that's 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 good though. I, we had a great time, didn't we? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I tried to embarrass Pastor, and he just would not relinquish other things that, that well, was going you, on. <laughs> you need to be careful there. You got to remember that I was on that conversation with yeah, you and the Pastor. It. I know it. I was. I was with in you and your newfound yeah. lady yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> not my lady friend. I was trying to get out of trouble on both ends of that one, but. <laughs> Sometimes we get in big predicaments when we go to do funerals, ain't that right? <laughs> you never know. Oh, my Lord. Lord, help us sometimes. Good evening, Brother Walter. Wayne Thomas, it's good to see you there, brother. Donnie Moore. Hey, Donnie Moore sent me something really great this evening. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share his news since he, he's not able to talk. He sent me a message that said he got a phone call today from the uh, transplant center. He is definitely on the uh, transplant list. Uh, they they called him, and he is definitely on there. The doctors have approved him. The, the consultation went well the other day when I took him down there to UT. So congratulations, brother. It is great. It is great to hear that you're on the transplant list. I'm glad that the doctor called you. Uh, congratulations. We are really, really happy with you, brother. Uh, that is something that uh, not a lot of people can uh, be proud of, but this is his second time being on there. We are really happy. We're, we're going to be praying that this is a really short uh, time for you to be on there, yeah. uh, but uh, we are really happy for you. We'll keep that in prayer. Yes, definitely. And uh, brother's already hit, hit me up here. <laughs> Put that on your bucket list. Yeah, you need to be quiet, Th. <laughs> Can we kick him? Kick him off there? Can <laughs> hey, we got a couple of announcements. Uh, we're gonna uh, do real quick. Um, we need to uh, be be uh, remembering your intercessory prayer group uh, tomorrow night, five thirty to seven. If you can come by the church, uh, sanctuary be open. Uh, you don't have to get here right at 530. If you can't make it until 6, that's a good thing, too. Yeah. So uh, just 530 to 7, we want people to come by and pray. We we had six people last week, and three of them were single adults. Now, I tell you what, if that didn't do my heart good, Amen. to see those single adults coming out and praying with our church and, and for the things of God to happen in this church. And, and then one of the things I just want to share real quick, um, the Lord, when I was working on uh, setting this prayer wheel up, uh, he came out with a, uh, the Spirit led me into the deal. The reason why he gave me the wheel, I didn't really know it at first. I just knew God said, call it the prayer wheel. Well, I got a feeling that God wants our church to be a 360 church. A 360 church is literally a church that is not broken in the wheel. The wheel is always connected. And every gift of the Spirit is operating fully within the bounds of what God wants in the church 
That makes it a 360 church. That's good. Hey, always meet in the backside of it, buddy. Yep. You're going to help whoever's in that wheel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hey, tonight, uh, and, and we got plenty of time for people to get here. Brother Don Price is uh, two doors down from us yeah, here. Yeah, 7 o'clock, bereavement, bereavement class. classes. If uh, you've lost some people, which a lot of people lost people this year, you've got time to get on down here. Yeah, and uh, uh, I seen Sister Jane pop on a while ago. Uh, Sister Jane's mother passed away, and tomorrow is the uh, the funeral, which, you know, Sister Jane is up in Delaware. Uh, the, the funeral is up in Georgetown, Delaware. Sister Jane, we're thinking about you. We, we love you, sissy, and uh, we, we've got you in our prayers. Uh, our pastor, uh, you know, if there was any way possible, we would be up there with you, sister, and uh, we, we've got you in our prayers, and our, everybody's just, you know, we are... It's just our condolences goes out to each and every single one of you. So we 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 are thinking about you. Um, Sister Deborah just popped up. Popped okay, uh, overcomers. That's right. Will be uh, seven o'clock on on Zoom. I, I've never really been on Zoom, but it's I, not hard. But it, uh, Brother Brian Williams would be our guest, giving his testimony. She says uh, that would be awesome. Uh, he's a great speaker. Uh, that would be pretty good for everybody to jump on there and listen to him. Uh, we've got uh, several others. I think uh, uh, Brother Byron Williams' wife's uh, little group meets Wednesday after the uh, um, the praise and worship. And oh. that, that would be really great for everybody to, that I think it's uh, 18 to 25 or 17 to 25. Something like uh, that. Yeah. If you guys are, are interested in that, you need to uh, ask uh Sister Buffy, and uh, uh, I think uh, Brady is uh, one of the other leaders in that. Uh, join in with them. Uh, and I think our heroes is uh, going to be uh, starting up next week or the next. Uh, if uh, uh, Pastor uh, Philip is on here, he can let us know when it's supposed to meet for the first time. Uh, it's going to be on Monday mornings at 830. So we got a bunch of them starting up. We got a bunch of uh, uh, other things that's uh, happening. Uh, uh, don't love notes. Uh, yep. Uh, love notes from God. Uh, Sister Amanda is uh, Rathburn is doing that on Thursdays at yep. seven thirty, and so and I've been able to attend there, even though I'm the only guy on it so far. Some of you other guys need to get in there and and. Support we, the group. We got a lot of things going on. Hey, th don't forget that on uh, Sundays before the evening service, starting at four thirty, the uh, the pastor and uh, assistant pastor has got a class for the ministers. Uh, if you're called to uh, preach or teach, uh, there's a lot of great cl uh, things going on in these classes. Uh, it's this this last class it was real good. We got uh, a lot of things that. You know, did he, you record it? I was out. I, I did not. Oh. He, he won't let me record him whenever he, he's, <laughs> he's going to pick on me. Oh. He, he won't let me at all. Oh, really. okay. Yeah, that's my rules, not his. But anyway, marriage teaching starting uh, Wednesday night, he says, in the main sanctuary. Uh, this... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 is this one that I can skip? <laughs> I think I've got one more to, according to California law, three strikes and you're out. <laughs> Brother, I don't know if I'm coming or not. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it between classes here. <laughs> but, uh, oh, my soul. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll have to get on the sidebar and talk about that one. Um, no, I, I, I kid. Uh, but, uh, hey, br brother is really, really good on this stuff. And, and I really think that uh, this will be something that no matter whether you go to this church or not, you either need to be here or, or uh, make sure that you watch it sooner or later. Pastor does a real good job on his series. And, I, I you know, me and uh, uh, Brother Philip takes every single one of his uh, series and we put them in order on, on YouTube. And you can go back and watch them at any time. Um <laughs> Uh, you may <laughs> I'm going to block him. <laughs> uh, 
But you anyway, you can go back to YouTube and you can see all of his series and, and gather in all of the things that he's got. Plus, we put in all the uh, scriptures and stuff that he uses. That way you can take it and re-preach it. <laughs> Maybe do it a little bit worse or a little bit better. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, um, uh, prayer requests. You know anybody that... Uh, I didn't get a list of uh, prayer requests, but I know we need to pray for, uh, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for laughing on that, brother. Um, besides uh, Sister Jane up there, uh, I know we've got uh, some that's out sick right and now. You said Brother Donnie and, uh, yep, so. and uh, you know, the, um, I mean, we got people sick, Brother Rick, um, you know, with his leg and. Yes, sir. And. Uh, you know, just a lot of, like you said, there's been a lot of sickness going around, and, you know, we just need to get through this. It seems like we never can get a full church because somebody's always sick. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, we, we've got uh, a couple that's sick uh, in another church. We need to keep them in, in our prayers. Uh, we need to continue to pray for our pastors in, in these other churches. Uh, we need to make sure and lift them up. Uh, we need to pray for, for strength in, in our pastors. Uh, uh, we need to pray for Greg Hodge, uh, Pastor says. Uh, we need to continue to pray for, uh, uh, you know, our, 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 well, let's, let's just call it what it is. We, we need to pray for our, our leadership in, in our government. You know, they're still mm -hmm. continuing to do the, uh, let's just, in my words, not y'all's, but they're doing the wrong things in our eyes. We need to continue to pray for uh, our local leadership that they're trying to do what's right. Uh, but most of all, let's continue to pray for our leadership in our churches. They're they're leading us in the right way, and uh, I, I just I feel that we've got a, a really great church and a great leadership here. Uh, Brother Joe Kirton has COVID. Pastor says let's pray for him. Uh, let, let's continue to pray for Cece next door. She she's. Uh, uh, you know needing some comfort right now uh I, I think there's a couple of families around here that just need some uplifting right now uh you're our guest today do you want to lead us in prayer sure. brother dear heavenly father we thank you for this opportunity to share your word tonight god we just come before you asking mentioning all these prayer requests from sister jane to to brother donnie to Rick, uh, to Brother Joe, God, we just know that there's so many that are sick, people out in our community that are sick, and God, we just pray for our country, God, we pray for our local leaders and state leaders, Lord, God, it's, a, it's an awesome responsibility to try to lead so many people, God, and I just pray that all our leaders start looking to you for answers, Lord, because you're the one that has all the answers. Amen. And God, I just pray for your healing and your movement in our church and in the churches that we've talked about here with all the leadership, God, and, and that the pastors and the leaders of each church just make the right decisions, all based on what you want, Lord, not our will, but your will, God. And that's what we ask right now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, just, just to bring you up to date, everybody's been asking me about uh, Brother Joe, uh, my roommate. He is doing better today. He, he's still uh, under the weather, uh, but he's, he is doing better. I thank everybody for calling me and texting me and asking, but uh, he is doing better. Um, but if you got your Bible, let's, uh, let's go back into Ephesians uh, chapter 6. We're, we're still talking, and we're going to wrap up today about the whole armor of God. Um, and I thank uh, Pastor Philip for bringing this uh, this up to us. I, I really, if you want to use this one, brother, we can turn it around this way and open her up here. Uh, I don't know if you know how to use it or not. Uh, you just hit the book that you yeah, want to go to. Yeah, the book too. Anyway, uh, we uh, we want to finish it up today, but I. I just t thank him so much for bringing this because I, I probably have gotten a couple of sermons out of what we've done over the last uh, five or six weeks that we've uh, covered this. Uh, but I was talking to uh, Larry today, and I told him that I wanted to uh, 
to recap just a couple of things and then uh, finish up uh, with the uh, the helmet and the sword. Um, but we also wanted to touch a little bit about uh, Valentine's Day uh, during this uh, um, uh, this series today. You know this uh, this whole armor of God. You know I, I looked at it uh, uh, today, trying to study a little bit and. and you know, some people was, uh, you know, talking about how uh, it was a whole armor of God and, and some some of the uh, denominations was talking about it was, uh, uh, you know, the the whole armor of Jesus and the whole armor of of, of the people. And, and but the Bible clearly states that it was the whole armor of God. He was the one that uh, uh, put it out there for all of us to wear. And it and I loved the way Brother Philip put it last week, you know, it, the whenever he he was talking about how the truth uh, uh, was put out and uh, uh, it, it covers us from head to toe no matter what is put about us and, and I, I started thinking you know what a better day it could not be a better day to be talking about the whole armor of God because you're talking about the love of, of, of Valentine's Day you, you, you start thinking about the whole armor of God and you start talking about loving one another on Valentine's Day it, 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 it just it, you can't get by the whole armor of God without having truth and having uh, uh, righteousness uh, you know the, the shot of tra uh, preparation of gospel and peace you know, all of these things are, are intertwined with your heart, at, which is where he lives. Right. And and I, I got to thinking about the last thing, the helmet of salvation. Yeah, that's what we're sort of trying to take up, but we're reviewing. The, I think we go back to verse 13, and it says, Wherefore, take unto you. In other words, that's the personalization of of what Paul's saying here, Jesus gave it to us, and you've got to take it. You have a choice, brother. Yep. You have a choice. You can do it, or you can choose not to do it. You know, and we we just need to, you know, start each day, and we've got to take up that armor because we fight against. You know, not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, you know. And we have to be ready to fight. That's right. It's, it's not a choice. The enemy's going to attack. It's just a matter of when. Right. So each and every day that we wake up, we set, set our feet on the ground. The enemy is already thinking about what am I going to do to make them miss step. What are, we, what are we going to do to, to try to get their armor off of them or loosen their belt or, or make them uh, misstep in their sword, uh, you know, which is the sword is the, the word. No. And, and they, they are already thinking about how are we going to make them, them miss out. Well, think about the football game that was last night. The offense had a game plan against the defense of each opposing team, and the defense had a game plan against each team's offense. Yep. So you, we never know, except by the Spirit of God, if we're going to be on offense or if we're, we're going to be on defense. And so we have to be ready for whatever things come against us. You know, whatever defense or offense they're going to throw at us, we've got to be ready. And this is part of being ready. It's, it's your armor. That's right. And the helmet of salvation is going to talk a lot tonight. Uh, and 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 what we just said there, and it, you back up one verse, and it, and it says, "For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood." And 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 if we wrestle not against those things, and when we put on the, those, uh, you know, the the shield of faith and and, and the uh, the the sword and the excuse me, the, I said sword, but I meant to say the shield. Uh, you know, uh, to b battle off the darts and the breastplate and everything. If we wrestle not against those things, 
because of the faith that we have that we put those things on it'd be so much easier but those things are supposed to keep us from having such such uh, uh, issues but whenever we do so wrestle not against the flesh and blood but against the principalities against the powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual weakness in the high places and that is when you're supposed to put in the the works put on the 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 armor of, of God, one piece at a time, and know what each piece that is. And, and Brother Philip hit, hit it on, on the head whenever he said, "You put on that 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 shield and all those fiery darts, you know." And 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 it it resonated with me today. And as I was reading that thing, I was rewatching the the series where he he started talking about you know each dart was coming at you, and I got to thinking, you know, he's he's so right because. You put on that helmet, which is what we're supposed to be talking about tonight. You know, we put that helmet on, that worry goes away. That salvation, because you turn everything over to him. Everything that you're holding on to now, that, 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 that shield, you're holding it up. Because that salvation that has got you in here, he, he's riding with you. You turned that heart over to him. You know, pastor said it the other day, you laid everything on, on that, that altar. And, and you, you went through <clears throat> salvation to Christ. And, and all of a sudden, that whole armor is yours. You've got the word, you've got the salvation, everything is going with you. you got the helmet on, and all of a sudden... That shield means something, and you, you can battle off every one of those, those arrows. And, and I was all of a sudden, the the whole thing that Phillips, Philip was saying to me, it just I, I could just see it in a movie, you know. I could see myself just sitting there battling off every one of those, those spears. Mm -hmm. And I just loved what he said. Yeah, I mean, you go back and, you know, where it says, take uh, unto you the whole armor, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and then it goes on. It doesn't stop there. It adds to it. And right. it says, having done all to stand. That's right. See, sometimes in a battle, you just have to hold the line. That's what we call it. You know, you know, you got to hold a line. In, in battle, in, in some of your training, you find, you know, they say you got to hold this line. You got to hold this hill or you know if the army guys but you've got to hold it you know and, and so you got to stand there and defend it and going back to what you're saying about all those darts now start thinking about this that he's giving you a physical thing about the shield of faith and the fiery darts but take look at this and see what's happening spiritually those are attacks from the enemy coming in at you, fiery darts. Amen. You, you have this fiery dart coming at you, and you got to use that shield of faith. Your faith is what's going to get you through the battle. See? Deborah Eastep says, when you are fully armored, we just let God do his thing. And I love the way she put his in all capital letters. Yeah. His thing, it's in his power of his might. And that, that is so right because you have given everything to him. It's his his battle from then on. Right. In chapter uh, in in verse seventeen, it, it, it is where we're starting at today. It says and take his uh, take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. At that moment, whenever I I, I was talking about. Pastor said, "Put it all on, on the on the altar. You take that helmet of salvation, and then the sword of the spirit, which is the word. You are protected. If you start with the sword and you start taking that sword and you start using it from then on, that word 
it's going to protect you because you at that moment you have the word you can start protecting yourself against any demon at any moment that demon starts when that foot hits the floor in the morning time and you start praying you use the word to protect yourself Come on, people, you, you yeah. know where, where this is going. You start praying in the morning time. You start praying in the afternoon. You start praying before your meals. You start praying before you, you, you pray before you leave to go on a trip. Hey, let, can I tell you something? Uh, pastor, pastor probably gets tired of me sometimes. You, you call him you? and you ask him. Really? You call him and ask him. Before I take anybody anywhere in a trip, I call him and I say, I'm leaving. Let's pray. And we pray before I go anywhere with anybody from this church. We have corporate prayer because we pray to make sure that th that we are one one mind, one body, mm -hmm. one accord, that we are covered in the body of the Lord. Because the prayer covers us in anything that we do. That word, that sword is going to cover us. No devil, no, no harm is going to come to us. Unless we're covered by the Lord. That helmet is, is of salvation is covering us. That sword is covering us. That shield is covering us. Well, you know, I, I take a look at this helmet of salvation and first thing I think about, okay, we're putting something on our head. What, what is in your head? It, it's your mind. You know, and... And generally, I don't know how many people we've talked about in our lifetime or talked to, but we know people get saved. The first thing that happens, the enemy tries to attack the mind. That's right. The enemy tries to tell them, you didn't get saved. You ain't saved. That's and then right. he even tells, try to tell the experienced Christians that they're not saved. You know, you're, you're not saved. But the helmet helps us fight off the the enemy, you know, attacking our mind. And you're going to, I know why they put this here, because in the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Amen. But I'm just telling you, the word, though, I used to tell people who would just get saved, I still would, you know, if I talked to them more, is I always tried to tell them that you've got to put on this whole armor. You need to put on the helmet of salvation. And then I would say, you need to read the word of God. Amen. You got to have the word of God. I said, look, I, I know you've never read the word of God. And I'm telling you, starting the gospels, if you can just read five verses, read five verses. I don't care, but you need to read something. You know, you need to read out of that word every day in your life. It is more important than you'll ever think. That's right. Because one of the best ways, I believe it's in Matthew chapter four, uh, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, think about it. When the temptation came against him, what happened? Jesus said it is written. Yep. He rebuked him with just the word. Just think, if you can just remember one thing, and, and that attack comes to your mind, remember the word of God. You can fight it with the word of God. You can say, Satan, it is written. It said, you know, whatever you've learned. You can use that word against Satan. Pastor said the mind is the battleground for the soul. Yes. Amen. It is. Absolutely. In verse 18 in here, it says, Praying always with, all, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and su supplication for all saints. You already started that one a few minutes ago. I did. You got ahead. I did. You I went don't. flying right by the helmet. Uh, yeah, I did. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah. It's Pat just Jared. It's just, it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> and for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. That sounds just like me, don't it? Yeah. 
mouth open boldly uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel. You know, th this this is just it. We we are all needing to open up our mouths and, and pray openly. You know, a lot, I, I see this way too much where it, somebody may want to pray and they, they just, they calmly close their eyes. They, they, God wants to hear your prayer. And, and, and here's something that may, may shock you a little bit. Most people want to hear your prayer. Most people want to hear you pray because they may get something out of your prayer. I want to hear you pray and I want to hear you, 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 you utter the, the blessing that you're about to give somebody. Pray aloud. Pray to where you're, you're giving God his, his notice that, that you're saying, Lord, please, and then pray aloud. I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Well, you know, sometimes we, I know most of us go to the altar and we'll pray aloud. Yes. Let me tell you a little story, a, a testimony. Back when I was a young Christian, I wasn't called to preach yet. I, I would just go to the altar. And, and I went to the altar in this church and got down, prayed in a, uh, a lady of... Uh, Japanese um, descent uh, was praying, kneeling close by, and and I started praying in the spirit. And she came up to me after that, and she asked me, "Where did you learn Japanese? You told me everything I needed to hear." I looked at her and said, "Ma'am, I don't know Japanese." Oh, hallelujah! So I'm telling you that. Sometimes, even when you're praying for somebody in the altar, if the Holy Spirit moves on you, let the Holy Spirit have his way because they, the Holy Spirit can talk to somebody and we have no idea what's going on. I mean, I'm not saying that you just can turn the Holy Spirit on and off, but I do believe in yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's right. And letting the Holy Spirit have his way. So... You know, it's important that we're praying, you know, and that we get in the spirit, which is just what it really does start to talk about, you know, getting in the spirit here. You know, praying always, you know, that we should always be a, in a spirit of prayer, you know. We can't always stop, but if you're in a spirit of prayer, God does, you know, move on you to do certain things. And sometimes you go, I, yeah, I don't know why I did that. And then, you know, an hour and a half later, you know why, why you did what you did. That's right. <laughs> we, I think a lot of times whenever we get, get up there, we, we're trying to be so focused in, in what we're wanting to say that, you know, we, we, we are quiet in, in our prayer and we don't, I think, Brother Brady said it the best last week, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember exactly what he said, but we don't necessarily say it, it aloud, and, and it needs to be an, an utterance to him to be a conversation, exact conversation to him, and we don't need to pay attention to what everybody else is saying and everybody else is doing. We need to speak to God the Father through the Son and it needs to be a, a conversation that, you, that you're having openly with him and let him know what is on your mind a and it needs to be a, a, a direct conversation and you need to let your heart be known because whenever you're trying to pay attention well I, I need to talk to him but he don't yeah. need to hear when you start paying attention to him I know you're whispering secrets. Yeah. But whenever you do that, you're not being truthful. <laughs> right? Because there is no secrets between you and the Father. He already knows. He's just wanting you to tell him. Mm -hmm. He knows about Confess. the other night. You know? Yeah. He already knows. Confess. That's right. 
Debra Eastup's got something here. Let me uh, pull it up here. The biggest battle along with praying is to keeping you from hearing the word because faith builds through hearing, keeping people from the house of God where the anointing word is being preached, dims our lamps. When I get slack, I measure my faith because the enemy has me where he wants me. That is so true, sis. So true. We we have a problem right now in, in this world. And it's not just an American thing. It's not a southern thing. It's it's not a me and him thing. But it's an every type of person thing to where we want to keep our secrets to ourselves instead of confessing them. Our secrets is our sins. And, and, and we think that we are the only ones that's got them. God knows what they are, and he wants you to tell them to him. Get to the altar, wherever your altar may be, and confess your sins to, through Jesus Christ to him. That is, that is the, the, the walk. Confess your sins. Put on your, your armor. Once you get that armor on, walk your life with Jesus Christ. That armor will protect you through the evil steps that you walk through this world. You've got your armor on. Bash those enemies out of the way. Walk your life. Save souls and have a happy life with Jesus Christ. It, and it sounds like it's, it, it's e easy. It's not easy, but it's so much easier than what the enemy is trying to tell you that it is. I can... I can tell you right now that there, there's there's a hundred ways that I could have, have fell, fallen down and never gotten back up. But there's all the, always that one way that I've gotten back up. I held my hand up and Jesus picked me up. And that's that's the way to do it. Just get back up. Yeah, and we got to keep that helmet on. And, and we're supposed to put things on. Even Paul and... First Thessalonians 5 and 8. That's good. He said, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breast, breastplate of faith and of love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. See, good. we're supposed to be mature, sober-minded. You're supposed to... And like the pastor said, you got this battlefield of the mind. There's a battle for your mind because it affects your soul. So we have to be sober and we put that helmet on because that is our hope. That, you know, God gave us that to keep us, to keep our mind. So that we'll always have that hope of salvation in our life. A sure foundation. <laughs> if you want to go there. No, I like that. That's good. You know, the the next ne next verse here starts. Can you see it? I can get back to it. Okay. Um, the next verse here, 21. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. I may uh, say this this name wrong, but I'm going to try it. Uh, Tekius, tech, Tekius, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye may know our affairs, and that he might comfort our, your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We we take this this chapter, and we see what what he's trying to tell us is is we start putting on the body of armor, and he's trying to let us know that once you get this put on. And you put it on each and every single day. There is nothing that's going to harm you. For God will cover you with his love and mercies. And you keep into the word each and every single day. You're protected. 
and you will know and be loved by the faithful ministers in the Lord. Is that what you're reading out of this? Yeah, I mean, I go back. You got to understand that Paul was, well, even in verse 20, he did say, he said, for I am an ambassador in bounds, bonds. In other words, he was in prison. Right. He was still putting on this whole armor and he was still encouraging everybody so that he could speak boldly as he ought to speak. That even though he was in prison, he was being held captive, he was still speaking in his letters and to his fellow servants that would come by and visit him. He was still speaking to them with the boldness that he wants all of us to speak. And he said he basically in this, he's saying, look, I pray all the time. I pray that I'll be able to say the things that I need to say, that I'll say the things that God wants me to say. And for us ministers, that is always our prayer. I don't even want to get up in front of anybody if I don't say what God gives me. I want to be able to share with what God gives me. And you wonder why sometimes ministers get quiet on the day before they're preaching sometimes. Right. It's because their mind is so engulfed in what's going to happen in the sermon, you know, in the word that's going to be shared. That Oh, hallelujah. That we don't want to take a misstep. And we want to proclaim it boldly. We, I mean, sometimes God gives us stuff and we're going, God, you really don't want me to preach that, right? <laughs> uh, I'm serious, though. Yeah. But, you know, regular Christians are almost as bad. Think about it. You can be praying if the Holy Spirit says, go talk to your friend so-and-so and tell them this, and you're going to go, no, nah, God, that ain't from you. Let's be serious. We're talking about being bold. Well, you remember in the first part of it, it says, servants be obedient to them that, that are your masters according to the flesh and fear and trembling and in singleness to, of your heart and as unto Christ. Oh. That, that is exactly what you're talking about. Ooh. We have to be, be That's good those servants. <laughs> that is a, that servant, Ooh, yes. God. Thank I, you, Lord. I, I mean, Philip and I was talking about this the other day. We we we've went into churches before to where, you know, we're trying to put on the the, the the armor of Christ, and all of a sudden God's going, "Hey, uh, that sermon that you got, yeah, let's let's change that up. There's people in there we need to talk to a little bit differently." Yeah, and and it has. You ever been in the middle of a sermon and? And you realize it's going the wrong way. And the Holy Spirit says, why don't you just get rid of the notes? Yes, sir. <laughs> Throw I, the notes over your shoulder. Back in the day when we had paper, we didn't use computers. <laughs> I, I've been in, in the middle of a, of a church before when somebody was speaking. And he says, there's somebody here with a message. And he would point to a, a, another preacher and says, you've got a message. And the preacher would get up and say, yes, I do, and start preaching. That is delivering God's word. But a lot of people don't have that kind of courage to be that bold. Yeah. To say, well, okay, Lord, I'm going to back off. I'm going to give it to the brother that you've given yeah. the message to. But <laughs> but I think we're in that type of church where we do have that that type of mentality to where if somebody else has a, has a word and you and all of a sudden God stops you, you know, we we've got that courage in in, in this type of a community you know and, and god moves this type of church you know and but you can't find that in, in some of the uh, uh the other denominations around here you you don't i mean uh dare i say you've got two prideful of pastors in some of the other denominations around here they would never step away from their pulpit to do it oh. is that okay to say pastor uh, Pastor Phillips says, there is weight of what hangs in the balance. Uh, yes. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. 
But one, one of the things that, that happens whenever you are trying to deliver the God's word is, is if, if you're too prideful to, to step well, away. To be led by the Spirit. Yeah, that is the biggest problem. If you're too prideful, then, then I think God won't, won't work with you on that. Brother Philip, help, help me out here. Is it pride? Is uh, I, I think that's right. If if you've got too much pride, and I, I think the the spirit won't, won't reside in it. Oh man, I sh what I should have done is invited him into this. <laughs> Bless his heart. I picked on him all day today, y'all. Y'all y'all need to pray for him. But I think a lot of on the FaceTime in. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I'm giving him the night off, y'all. Y'all pray no. for him. I think also that whenever we we are in the spirit and we're we're up there and we're preaching and and we have the uh, y'all help me out on this now. If we're in the spirit and we're up there preaching and, and we're preaching to a a, a a congregation, the amens and the hallelujahs and everything that's coming from from the congregation is one of the biggest and broadest prayers, dare I say prayers, that you can ever give the Lord. Because the word coming out of the, the pastor, the preacher, or the minister that's giving you the word is coming from the Lord. And if you're giving the Lord his due diligence of an amen or, or a hallelujah, that to me is something that you need to talk to the Lord about. You know, I just go back to... Verse 20 again, it says, for I am an ambassador. I'm not in bonds to, well, not physically as Paul was, but I am an ambassador to Christ. And I still want the last part of this, that I may speak boldly. See, I, I that's all I want to do is, is I want, you know, God to use me as a, any way he can. And that's where we're trying to get all, every one of you, that's the reason why we're talking about the armor of God, is try to get everybody to the point to realize that it is a battle. You know, I, I heard the other day a description where you got the forces of evil on one sidewalk and the forces of good on the other sidewalk, or righteousness is what, what they said. And in the middle, you dare say, got the majority of people heading toward the end of time, not knowing, don't even realize there's a battle going on. That's right. You know, trying to win a few to each side. And I don't know about you, but I don't want people to keep running to the gates of hell and falling into the pit. And that's what we're here for is to stop that. A pastor tells us every Sunday, you know, that... We're here to get people saved. You know, that's our purpose. I mean, we yes, do we like the big spiritual moves of God? But the, the big thing is there's a war going on and there are people running toward the pits of hell. And we got to get them stopped. We got to save a few. We got to stop them. And that's the reason why you got this armor. That's right. Let, let's back up to the very first part of this. I, I want to read Donnie's comment, but let's okay. back up to the very beginning of this. Uh, in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the, the whales, wild. Uh, wiles, wild. excuse me, I said that whales, <laughs> the first time I read that was... There ain't no A there. Yeah, or an H, uh, the wiles <laughs> of, of the devil. You know, that, that right there is, is a prime example of, of everything that, that God... Thing. Well, it's just like Philip putting an ER in everything. <laughs> That's a Tennessee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but th this is a prime example of what God was, was trying to teach us of, of, of his children being prepared of, of everyday life. You're going to be faced with, with enemies from the time that you get up to the time that you go to bed. You're going to be faced with enemies that you have got to be prepared for, whether it be be the uh, the the shoes that you put on, the the 
the the platelets on your your legs i forget what what they're called without looking here the the the, the belt the sword the shield the, the helmet everything has to be in its place and it uh, my grandmother used to say you got to put it on you got to shine it up you got to be ready to be using it every single day and, and she was telling me that because you got to not only be using it, but it's got to be polished up for everybody else to be knowing you that know, it's ready to be. Takes me way back to when I, in the 1970s, when I went to boot camp. Yeah. That was when they still gave you a rifle. Yeah. You know what? You had to clean that stupid thing every day. Well, she. I mean, because they'll take it from you and look at it and inspect it, and you know. And you went everywhere with it. You didn't leave it behind. You took it with you. Well, the the point of shining things up is to make sure that everybody else knows where you come from. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure that everybody else is aware. You are a, a, a bona fide Christian, as she says. There you go. Um, let me read Donnie's comment. Okay. Oh, is it here? I always need God to direct me and lead me, brothers. God is the blesser of his living word. Amen. Amen. You know, we we have got to be that. We've got to make sure that when we walk out of the house, you know, you see me, you're going to know that I'm a Christian by my walk, my talk, and my presence. Well, I, see, that goes back to what we used to say a long time ago. You know, sometimes you're the only Bible that anybody sees. That's right. You're the only Bible. What's it look like? You know, is it filled with cuss words and and things like that? Or is it filled with the love of God? Is it filled with grace? Is it filled with mercy? Uh-oh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> because right. so many times in the church, let's face it, we are uh, not very graceful to people. <laughs> Sister Deborah says, coming together in unity, one mind and one accord we know through the spirit and god what god is wanting done god wants all the gifts working in the body for edification Mm -hmm. amen we have a church that has opportunity to carry god's glory to reach the lost reach the lost reach the lost the holy spirit shows up and shows out almost every service that is awesome in today's churches amen to that hey let me tell you something it's not just the pastor it's not just the deacons it is not the the people that's taking up the offering or or holding the doors open for the people it is the embodiment of christ that is inside that building that helps save the lost. It takes a 360 church. It it takes exactly the 360 church. It's the people that drives in. It's the the people that does the parking. It does every single aspect of that building. Brother Philip and I and and Pastor and and all the people that was involved in in, in the meetings that sets sets everything up, we said it uh, months and months and months ago. If we're going to save the lost, we've got to get everybody included in in making sure that we greet, we say hello, we make sure everybody understands that God is after everybody. That's a hospital down there. It's for everybody. If you've got sin, you're welcome. If you don't have sin, you're welcome. Make sure that your body of armor is on no matter where you're at, what you're doing, but make sure that you're going after each and every single soul that's out there. But whenever you, what, what was it that, that pastor said? If you're not after people, you're at, you're not ready for ministry or, or something like that. That Whatever it was, it, it was right. If you're not a people person, you're not ready for being in church because it's all about people. You've got to go after every single person that you're, at, you're, you're ready for. It's about servanthood. It's that's not right. about being somebody yeah. I mean if somebody's an elder if they're an elder because of what they you know the Christ that they portray and the, the servanthood you Amen. know if, if you know our pastor associate pastor are about servanthood they're not, they're not about their glory you know and it's the same way it's got to be with everybody 
with everyone that does something. Every job, talking about unity in the church, every job is important in the church. Never. Every part is important in the church. The musicians are important, but the people who greet people when they come in are important. The people who clean the church up during the week is important. Yeah, I mean, every part plays a part. You there know? you go. Deborah found it for me. If people ain't your thing, then ministry ain't, ain't either. Amen. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's it. But, I mean, that's what we got to do. I mean. You know, we we uh, there's always room for more servants. I mean, there's there's vans out here that the pastor needs drivers to go pick up people. You know, if that's your thing, I mean, we need them. <laughs> pastor says, "House divided can't stand." Amen. Amen. One one person out of place trying to divide our our house. Is is needing to be corrected. Don't kick them out. Correct them. Try to move them in the right direction. Pray for them. Make sure that we get them right. The house divided cannot stand. Amen, Pastor. But we we've got to remember this. If you, if people ain't your thing, then ministry ain't either. We 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 have got to go after every single soul that we can get. Pastor gave gave us the the go ahead for this. Uh, uh, little thing that we're doing here and i love doing it thank you pastor so much for letting me do this and we're, we're going to keep reaching out but we also need to keep reaching out for out in the streets we need to be beating the streets with our feet and going after the street corners and and walmart and waffle house lord help us in waffle house the waffle houses and the, the uh, parts stores you name it we need to be i like around. waffles but they don't like me oh bless your heart do you eat eggs? We'll buy you I'll eggs. eat the eggs, yeah. Okay, we'll buy And they eggs. give me sliced tomatoes there too, but I, I got to tell you, I, you know, I like the... Hey, we'll, we'll buy you something. Hey, <laughs> take Pastor with you. He'll eat your waffle. <laughs> Not anymore, I don't think. No, no, he's he's trying to slim down. Yeah, he's doing a good job of it too. Yeah, but no matter what, we're going to go after people. Put your suit of armor on. Helmet and a sword. The we, breastplate. The, the breastplate. We need to make sure that everybody <laughs> understands what this is. I think I think Pastor's got a great sermon on, on the armor. I bet you he does. If we begged him hard enough when he gets done with this series, he'll preach on it. We've got to love on people. And what a better day to talk about it than today. Yeah. Valentine's Day. Love on your honey. Love on, on somebody and tell them that they need the armor of God. We've got a lot of people out there that has got one foot in church with their armor on and their sweetheart is not in church. Hmm. Passion for his passion. Amen, brother. I have a passion right now to get a lot of folks in this church. And Valentine's Day is a great day to say, hey, come on in and let's have a Valentine's party next Sunday. And let's invite them in and show that you love me by listening to a preacher. Deborah Eastell says, people are hungry and approachable right now. I have a few Valentines out this morning and Jesus put smiles on their faces. It's rewarding. Amen. 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 We have the ability to go out, win some people to the Lord because of the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior. You know. And I, even if it's hard to talk, we have little cards that, you know, with Mount Bell's information on it, a, a way to help somebody with salvation and phone numbers. I mean, there's help and there's aids here if you need them. I mean, God, uh, the pastor wants us to reach uh, or at least invite 22 people. That, Like he said, that's not even a person every other week. So, you know, most of the time when you run into somebody, there's usually two of them. So you, you get two at one time. Amen. Hey, um, tonight is going to be a little bit of a short night. I, I know that we... Uh, 
we normally stay on here for two or three hours, depending on how, how long-winded uh, Brother Philip is, but I'm not going to do that to y'all. Uh, and I do appreciate you coming out and being with me tonight. Uh, I'm not, it's always a pleasure. Uh, I, I, do you mean that? Do you really mean it? Yes. Okay. I appreciate Any time to share God's Word. I <laughs> love sharing God's oh, I, Word. I was thinking that you meant that by being with me. Oh, it's fun to be with you, brother. <laughs> But I got I, I got something for you guys. Pastor Pastor told me I could do this, and I, I'm going to uh, uh, let you guys know what I'm going to do. I've got a little project that I'm I'm cooking up, and and you know Pastor said twenty two for twenty two. Yeah. And and he did not say how we was going uh, supposed to do this. No. And and how would you like to do it the easy way? Would you like to do it the easy way? Is there an easy way? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you an easy way. All right. Would Would you invite me if I sent you something on, in email? Would you invite me with an email? Probably. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to be making up a, an email invite, and I'm going to be sending it around. So I'm going to send some out. And if you would like this invite, I'm going to send it out. Me and Sister Deborah is going to make them out, and we're going to send them to our Coffee and the Word friends first and see how it works. And, and we're not going to give it to the pastor because he says he can invite 22 without out anything because he's just mean like that. But I love him anyway. He's my best bud. But we're going to send this thing out and see if we can invite 22 people for ever, Coffee in the Woods. You've been out with him. No, don't, he don't, don't meet start. a stranger. Don't start, man. He's, his he head is this big. You know that? <laughs> it is. It's that big. Pastor, he's... Is just one of those people. I, I think he he grew up in the nineteen twenties. Yeah, yeah. He talks to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if he put sandals on and grew a beard, you know, <laughs> people might mistake him for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Pastor. Yeah, I do. He started it. Um, anyway, we're gonna uh, draw this little email up and we're gonna send it out. Uh, other than that. Hey, we've got Wednesday night service coming up, 7 o'clock, right here on campus. Uh, remember tomorrow night with my brother right here, Intercessory Prayer. Uh, it, it's going to be from 5.30 until 7 o'clock or longer if you want to stay. Hey, yep. we, we'll keep the doors open. Uh, but uh, Wednesday night is going to be a blast. I, I just feel the Lord is going to be moving in, in our service. Uh, hey, we, we had another one saved yesterday evening praise the uh, lord that that was awesome uh and uh, we've got some more things coming up uh, real soon uh let's see uh sunday we got uh, 8 15 if you don't have a church and you need a place to go and you work overnight and you want to come to church you don't have to change your clothes out of your work clothes uh just stop on by uh we we take you as you are uh come on in have a seat, Brother Philip, myself. You come in sometimes on, on 815, and uh, we we he we just never, bring everybody in. Yeah, we, his wife plays piano for us. and Just come on in, 815, 930 is a small groups, 1030 is our uh, uh, regular service. Uh, just, uh, that's right, Deborah Eastep, her Mac got saved. God bless him. We, we love him to death. Uh we we <laughs> oh man love you sissy uh anyway six o'clock uh sunday night i forgot where i was at there for a second but uh you come in you have have an expectation of something is going to happen when you come into this that's it these expect services. something to happen that's right uh we love you too brother donnie did i miss anything that you know of Pastor, did I miss anything? Brother Philip, did I miss anything? In 7.30 on Zoom, love notes uh, yep. from God. Any of my brothers and sisters out Got there? Got small groups on the, the church center app and, and, and click on the group and then ask for an invite and you'll have all the stuff to get Zoomed. You can be Zoomed. That's right. Lily Longhorn says, awesome. Souls that want, that's what it's all about. Amen, sissy. Yes. Hey, it's good to see you on here, Lily. I, I didn't see you before. I'm sorry I didn't say hello. 
Uh, Deborah says, if people were into your thing, uh, I love mm. that. Yeah. Brother Donnie might show up. That's good. But anyway, I think that's it, unless somebody's uh, chiming in a little bit late there. Um, but anyway, I believe that's uh, it for this. We wrap again, this up. If you want to drive a van and pick up people, we we have we need them. We we need a van, van we need running a, around. We, need, we got vans out here that just sit here. Yeah. <laughs> Lily says she was late. All right. It's all right. We appreciate her showing up. That's right. You got anything else, my friend? I just want to give God the glory and praise, man. It's just thanking him for everything that he's doing here. I love this church. Amen. Amen. Well, it just don't feel right closing without saying, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. As for you, brother. Love Phil, everyone. Love you guys. God bless. We will see you next week. Yes.